the dog back to him. It's a UFO. Oh, oh. Mary was a dick. Don't be the talking tree. The sky god. Unbelievable. I did see a couple of elves. For atmosphere, we have snowflakes throughout our parking lot. I gotta go. Forty and TV Xmas files. Saturday at nine on four. It's crunch time for the contestants on today's 15 to 1 as William G. Stewart presents a climactic end to the current series in the grand final. Oh, go on then, as it's Christmas. New Domestos system blocks have a clear advantage over blocks that color the water. They don't just freshen, but because they contain Domestos bleach crystals, they kill germs. And now there's a clear saving. Try them for free. Domestos system blocks. If we can get a little closer. The nocturnal activities of this species are fascinating. Some nibble delicious wafer-thin after eights. Here we see a challenge to the dominant male, who's clearly marked his territory. With awesome eyesight, this creature spots one lone after eight and devours mercilessly. What? And here... Blasted film crew got in here again. Oh dear, looks as though we've been spotted. <laughs> If you'd like to send a Christmas present that shows you really care, call 0800 013 0800 and order this beautiful Christmas bouquet from Flying Flowers. For just £12.99, it really is excellent value. And we promise your flowers will arrive in excellent condition and perfect time for Christmas, or we'll give you your money back. They'll be delivered by Royal Mail anywhere in the UK and Ireland. Just imagine the pleasure they'll give to someone you love all over Christmas. And you can be sure the flowers will last because they're cut while they're in bud. So simply think of the message you'd like to send. Then pick up the phone and call 0800 013 0800 with your credit or debit card to hand. A Christmas bouquet from Flying Flowers really does show someone you care and is the perfect way to say Merry Christmas. Turkey, 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 turkey. Tell me. I think you should just come home with me. I am Don Juan de Marco. He's going to kill me. I'm in the mood for smoked chicken. How about you? Turkey, Escape from it all turkey, on four. Turkey. Gordon Troughton from Rugby, Penny Fairs from Chesterfield, Tim Glynn from Oldbury in the West Midlands, Andrew Auger from Kencott in Oxfordshire, Bill Francis from Churchdown in Gloucestershire, Trevor Bench Capen from West Kirby or Merseyside, Alan Dunsmuir from Weybridge in Surrey, Bob Raybould from Bromsgrove in Worcestershire, Michael Irwin from Newcastle upon Tyne, Brian Rodman from Ashburton in Devon, Jeff Kelsey from Doncaster, Jeff Young from Bury in Lancashire, Nick Lawton from Hern Bay in Kent. Paul Hillman from Hampstead in London and Rob Sutherland from Hazelmere in Buckinghamshire are all here to play the 15 to 1 Grand Final. Introduced by William G. Stewart. Thank you and welcome to our 24th Grand Final. The 15 people standing behind me are the survivors of the 930 we started with in September and among them are four who were with us last time. Penny Fairs, Bill Francis, who's making his fifth appearance in a grand final and who is a 15 to 1 previous champion, Bob Raybould and Rob Sutherland. Here's how the finals board finished up and Michael Irwin's score of 311, only the fifth score we've had above 300 in 11 years, wins for him our top of the finals board trophy, this beautiful mid-Victorian tankard and it's Laura's job to present it to Michael. Laura? <laughs> Thank you.
there we are. I'll put it down there. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Well done. Well done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here's what today is all about, our grand final trophy, this stunning, plain, black glazed stemmed dish. It comes from ancient Greece and was made at or near Athens around 450 BC. And in about 40 minutes from now, Laura will have her second presentation job of the day to perform. And I have no doubt that whoever comes out as the winner today is going to be a worthy 15 to 1 champion. There's nothing more to be said except my usual grand final challenge, let battle commence. As usual, two questions each in the first round, one correct answer from you to survive, and we begin with Gordon Troughton. Gordon, radio and television. One hour of whose three-hour early morning radio programme on a national radio network can also be seen on television on Sky One? Chris Evans? Yes, Chris Evans. Penny? <laughs> whose adventures in the Royal Navy during the Napoleonic Wars are described in the series of 12 novels by C.S. Forrester? Captain Hornblower. Yes, Horatio Hornblower, who moves up through the ranks from lieutenants, I think. Tim, the United Nations. Which former president of a European country is the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights? The former president of the Irish Republic, um, Mary Robinson. <laughs> Andrew, coronations. Which crown is the first to be placed on the head of British monarchs at coronations? Prince Edward's crown. St Edward's crown. Bill, please, British Prime Ministers. Who is the eldest of the four living former Prime Ministers? Edward Heath. James Callaghan, who's 86. Ted's only 82. Trevor? The Arts. The name, please, of the world-renowned conductor who resigned as music director of the Royal Opera House in October. Carl Davis. Bernard Hytink. Alan, please. Which branch of the Christian Church was promoted originally at Oxford in the 18th century by the brothers John and Charles Wesley? The Methodist Church. Yes, Methodism. Bob, the USA. Why has a lady named Betty Curry become a famous name in the United States? Don't know. She is Bill Clinton's personal secretary. Michael, please. The writers Thomas Keneally, Colin McCulloch and Patrick White. Their common nationality, please. Australian. And still Australian writers, Brian. Which 1982 Booker Prize winning novel by Thomas Keneally was the basis for a major Steven Spielberg 1993 Oscar winning film? Thornbirds. Schindler's Ark, later published as Schindler's List in America. Jeff, conservation. Which island bird sanctuary in the Bristol Channel lies directly north of Cornwall and directly south of Pembrokeshire? Lundy. Jeff, please. How many British monarchs of the 20th century were born in the 20th century? One. Yes, Elizabeth II. Nick, the Bank of England. What broadly is the equivalent body in the United States? Uh, the Federal Bank. Uh. No, no, quickly. No? No. The Federal Reserve. Paul, please. Which country, part of the Horn of Africa, is the most easterly country in mainland Africa? Tanzania. Somalia. Rob, please. Literature, C.S. Lewis. Four children enter a land of permanent winter through a piece of furniture in a large country house. Which children's story? The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And your second question, Gordon. During the reign of Queen Victoria, there were four poets laureate. Two of the four, please. Tennyson. Yes. Wordsworth. Yes. Robert Southey and Alfred Austin. Penny, please. Famous women. Mrs. Beaton, the 19th century writer on household management and cookery. What was her first name? Alice. Isabella. Tim, please. Which science links the 2nd century Alexandrian Ptolemy, the 16th, 17th century Italian Galileo Galilei, and the 20th century American Edwin Hubble? Astronomy. Andrew, please. Who in October published a 150-page document called Fides at Ratio, Faith and Reason, to coincide with the 20th anniversary of his appointment? I don't know. The Pope. Bill, please. Astrology. Three horned creatures feature as symbols in astrological charts. Two of the three, please. A uh, ram and a bull. Yes, Aries, Taurus, and the other one being Capricorn. Trevor, please. Charles Dickens. In which Dickens novel does an escaped convict become the benefactor of a boy he meets in a graveyard on the marshes? Great expectations. Alan, 17th century theatre. 
which play by Ben Johnson follows the misfortunes of a greedy Venetian magnifico? Balboni. Bob, please. Literature. What's the title of Eric Maria Remarque's famous novel on the First World War? All Quiet on the Western Front. Michael, please. Politics. The young conservatives are no more. The name, please, of the new conservative youth movement launched by William Haig at the party conference in September. Conservative future? Yes, it is conservative future. Brian, sport, which football manager moved from Leeds United to Tottenham Hotspur in October? George Graham. Jeff, please. Still sport, the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup, the Prince Philip Challenge Cup, and the Queen Mother Challenge Cup, all races which take place as part of which major five-day sporting event in July of each year? Cow's Regatta. The Henley Royal Regatta. Jeff, please. Latin words and phrases. A text quoted verbatim means it's repeated word for word. What is meant by a text being copied literatim? Letter by letter? Yes, Jeff. <laughs> Nick, Mrs John Rolfe who died in 1617 and who is buried at St George's Church Gravesend, is better known by her American Indian name. What name? Pocahontas. Paul, please. In which field are Ken Loach, Tony Garnett and Kenneth Trodd famous names? Uh, TV production. Yes, television and films, producing and directing. Rob, politics again. In a complete list of the government, under which department does the Prime Minister's name appear? Uh, the Treasury. It does. <laughs> It's one down, 14 to go. Laura? And our one casualty is Andrew Auger. And of the remaining 14 contestants, six still have their three lives intact. <laughs> we'll start round two with this question. Gordon, which famous English church is depicted on the Bayeux Tapestry? Canterbury Cathedral. <laughs> Westminster Abbey. Penny? At the Conservative Party conference in Bournemouth, Cecil Parkinson stood down as party chairman. <coughs> Who is the new party chairman? Michael Ancrum. A number, please, Penny. Thirteen. Nick, the Bible, Exodus chapter 7. The rod cast down by Aaron was turned into what creature as a sign to Pharaoh of God's power? A snake. A number, please. Uh, number five, please. And Bill Famous Phrases. What term, coined by George Orwell in his novel 1984, means the faculty of harbouring two conflicting beliefs? Uh, Double think. Again, please, Nick. Uh, number six, please. And Trevor, which foreign motor manufacturer is the owner of Rover cars? BMW. A number, please, Trevor. Uh, Fourteen. Still motor cars, Paul. At which venue was the annual British International Motor Show held in 1998? Birmingham NEC. Yes, the NEC at Birmingham. A number, please. Three. Tim, the United States. The Second Amendment to the American Constitution declares that the people have a right to what? Remain silent in case it may incriminate them. That's the famous fifth. This ah. is to bear arms. Oh, really? Again, please. Seven. And Alan, the Nobel Prize for Peace. In 1998, it was won by David Trimble and John Hume. Christian name and surname, please, of either of the two Irish women who won the prize in 1976. Michelle McLaughlin. No, Mairead Corrigan and Betty Williams. Again, please. Nine. Michael, the Duke of Kent, Prince Michael of Kent. Who is their sister? Princess Alice. Uh. Princess Alexandra. Again, please. Twelve. And, Jeff, the European Union. In the context of the European Union and finance, for what body does the abbreviation EIB stand? European Investment Bank. A number, please, Jeff. Um, five. Bill, the United Nations. Which pop singer was recently appointed a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Population Fund? Uh, Terry Halliwell. Yes. Ginger Spice. <laughs> Change of career. Career move. Onwards, Bill. Number 15, please. Rob. The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. Which one was built for Ptolemy II of Egypt? The Great Pyramid at Cheops. No, uh, the Pharos of Alexandria, the lighthouse. Again, please, Bill. Number 12. Jeff, on the 21st of October, the Queen unveiled the newly refurbished Albert Memorial. What relation to the Queen was Prince Albert? 
great great grandfather. <laughs> Not bad in three seconds. <laughs> On we go. Uh, number eight, please. Politics, Bob. One of the most powerful positions in British politics. Who holds the position of Cabinet Secretary? In full, Secretary of the Cabinet and Head of the Home Civil Service. Um, Sir Robert Fellows. No, Sir Richard Wilson. Again, please. Uh, number three, please. And Tim, classical music, the symphonic suite Lieutenant Key J, the opera War and Peace, the ballet Romeo and Juliet. The composer, please. Tchaikovsky. Prokofiev. Again, please. Number one. Gordon, in terms of population, which city is the largest city in the Southern Hemisphere? Cape Town. Sao Paulo. Again, please. Number seven, please. And patriotic songs, Alan, rule Britannia. Thomas Arne wrote the music. Who wrote the words? I have no idea. James Thompson. Again, please. Number six, please. Mythology, Trevor. Norse mythology. What name is given to the beautiful girls who, in the service of Odin, ride over battlefields and select the heroes for Valhalla? Valkyries. A number, please. Um, ten. Brian, the largest island of which Commonwealth country is named after the navigator and explorer William Baffin? Uh, Canada. A number, please. Thirteen. Nick, geometry. What shape are the faces of the four-sided solid figure called a tetrahedron? Seven-sided. Triangular. Again, please, Brian. Uh, Fifteen. Rob, what Latin term, meaning dark chamber, describes a device used to project the image of an external object onto a screen inside? <coughs> Camera obscura. Again, please. Uh, six. And Trevor? For the invention of which board game are the three Canadians, Chris and John Haney, and Scott Abbott, known throughout the world? Trivial Pursuits. And number, please, Trevor? Three. And Tim? Christianity. At which town, now in modern-day Turkey, were the followers of Jesus first given the name Christians in approximately 40 AD? Antioch. And number, please, Tim? Number 12, please. And still religion and the Bible, Jeff? The authorised version, the second book of Samuel, who is described as the sweet psalmist of Israel? King David. We just David, yes. And we go, Jeff. Uh, number five, please. Science, Bill. What term applies in physics to the tendency of an object to remain in a state of rest until an external force is applied? Inertia. A number, please, Bill. Uh, number 11. This is <coughs> politics, please, Jeff. How many parliamentary constituencies are there in the United Kingdom? 635. 659. Again, please, Bill. Number 10. The USA, Brian. After which 16th, 17th century explorer and adventurer was the capital of North Carolina named? Raleigh. Yes. On we go, please. Nine. Michael, what term was coined by Aristotle to describe the purging of emotions through pity or fear? No idea. Catharsis. Again, please. Uh, 14. Paul, which is the most widely spoken language in Switzerland? German. A number, please. Uh, Twelve. Jeff, black tetra, silver tetra and neon tetra. Species of which sort of creature? Uh, tropical fish. On we go, please. Uh, number two, please. And Penny, from whose poem, Recessional, 1897, was the phrase, Lest We Forget, adopted as an epitaph by the Imperial War Graves Commission? No, I don't Rudyard know. Kipling. Again, please. Uh, number three, please. The USA, Tim. With what activity do you associate the aqueduct in New York and Santa Anita in Los Angeles? Baseball uh, ground? No, they're famous racetracks, horse racing. Oh, yeah. Again, please. Uh, number seven, please. Alan, the history of films, Gone with the Wind, in many people's list of their top ten pictures, who directed it and won an Oscar for doing so? No, I don't know, I'm sorry. Victor Fleming. Again, please. Uh, number five, please. Days of the week, Bill. In which country are the days of the week known, in their own language, of course, as Sunday, Moon Day, Fire Day, Water Day, Wood Day, Gold or Metal Day, and Earth Day? German. Uh. Japan. Again, please. 
Uh, number six, please. Literature, Trevor. How are three men called Dmitri, Ivan and Alyosha, who are related, described in the title of a novel by Dostoevsky? The brothers Kamarazov. Or well, Karamazov. <laughs> On this one occasion, I do know what you mean. <laughs> but OK, onwards, Trevor. Um, number 15. And Rob, history of films again. Which Hungarian-born filmmaker founded what was then called the British Hollywood at Denham Studios in the 1930s? King Vida. Sir Alexander Corda. Again, please, Trevor. Um, 13. Nick, Scotland. Born in 1759, who is the most famous son of the village of Alloway in Ayrshire? Burns. Oh. <laughs> if you hadn't said that, I'd not only set you down, I'd set you off the set. Now, Nick, another. Uh, so number two, please. And history. William Juxon accompanied Charles I to the scaffold in 1649. Why or in what capacity? Was he the executioner? No, he was his minister. Again, please. Uh, number one, please. Shakespeare. Gordon, which trilogy of plays tells of the youth and young manhood of the victor of Agincourt? Trilogy. Uh, trilogy. Henry the Fourth, parts one and two, and Henry V. Yes, indeed. Number nine, please. And history still, Michael? Which two countries were involved in the War of 1812? Britain and the United States. And number, please? Number six. Trevor, a private telephone switchboard is commonly known as a PABX. What do the letters PABX stand for in that context? Private Automatic Board Exchange. <gasps> private Automatic Branch Exchange. Again, please. It. Name and ordinal number, please. Who was the last pope to be recognised as a saint? He died in 1914 and was canonised in 1954. Uh, Pius XI. <gasps> Tenth. Again, Michael? Number one. Gordon, the title, please, of the song written by Julia Ward Howe, which begins with the lines, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. And number, please, Gordon? Number six. And Trevor, in which British city does a statue of a famous writer stand near the main railway station, which is named after one of his novels? Edinburgh. Number, please? Number 11. Jeff, which bird in religious art is used as a symbol of St John the Evangelist. The Eagle. And number please, Jeff. Number one, please. And this is British Prime Ministers. In the 20th century, only two men have become Prime Minister who had not previously held a cabinet post. Tony Blair, of course, who in 1924 was the first. Uh, Ramsay MacDonald. And number please, Gordon. Number six. Mathematics, Trevor. Sets of equations, none of which can be deduced from a combination of any of the others, are called what? Simultaneous equations. Independent equations. Gordon, please. Number nine. Mythology, Michael. In which ancient civilization was Marduk, spelt M-A-R-D-U-K, Marduk, the creator god? Is it Babylonian? It was the Babylonian. Um, Fourteen, please. Parapsychology. Psychometry... Psychometry is a term used for the supposed ability to discover facts about an event or people by what means? Mind reading? No, touching inanimate objects, like you hand over your watch and somebody can tell you something about you. Again, please. Number 13. Medicine, Nick. PTSD. PTSD is the abbreviation for a mental or emotional condition resulting from an injury or severe psychological shock. What does PTSD stand for? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. It was SD, stress disorder. Again, please. Twelve. Jeff, European monarchy, what's the name of the reigning house of Denmark? Luxembourg. A number? Uh, number one, please. When VAT, value-added tax, was introduced in 1973, which tax did it replace, Gordon? Um, Uh, purchase tax. Yeah. Again, please. Uh, number 10, please. And Brian, famous women. Hannah Glass was an 18th century English writer. What kind of books or on what topic? Romance. Uh, Cookery and housekeeping. She was an early Mrs. Beaton. Again? Uh, 14, please. Paul, finance. Exactly, please, in the context of pensions, what does the acronym SERPS, S-E-R-P-S, stand for? 
State Earnings Related Pension Scheme. A number, please, Paul? Uh, ten. Brian, the name, please, of the international radio station run and funded by the American government, which broadcasts round the world in English and other languages. Voice of America. A number, please? Twelve. Jeff, newspapers. In which national daily newspaper are there columns called Right of Reply, Monitor and Pandora? Sunday Times. The Independent. Again, Brian? Nine. Astronomy, Michael. The period of time during which a planet or star is visible is known as its what? Apparition. Again, please, Brian. Uh, Fourteen. Paul. Which Roman emperor is a subject of two books by Robert Graves? Claudius. A number? Uh, Eleven. Famous landmarks, Jeff. What's the name of the famous art museum in St. Petersburg which adjoins and occupies the Winter Palace? The Hermitage. We did get there. I sometimes wonder if we ever will in the grand final. Anyway, after the break for the final of the grand final, we shall see lined up Brian Rudman from Ashburton in Devon, Jeff Young from Bury in Lancashire, and Paul Hillman from Hampstead in London. It ought to be worth you staying with us. The perfect Christmas gift. Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. Now the memory can be yours forever. Own it on video now. This is an NSPCC appeal to ask you to give two pounds a month to help protect an abused child. Oh, Tony. Oh, yes, I remember Tony. Someone rang our helpline to report a baby abandoned in his pram at night. Tony had been left outside for hours. Cold, wet, hungry. No one answered his cries. Billy was left feeling very vulnerable after his abuse. Therapy helped him express his hopelessness and fear. It'll take him a long time to recover. Chloe seemed well cared for, except for the injury inside her mouth. An x-ray showed untreated fractures all over her body. We made sure Chloe was protected from such cruelty in the future. Abused children need the NSPCC's protection month after month. That's why we rely upon people like you to support us with a regular gift. Your two pounds a month could help us be there for a child like Tony, Billy, or Chloe. So please call 0800 77 0002 now to give two pounds a month or whatever you can. That's 0800 77 0002. There are so many children out there we haven't reached yet. New Strepsil's Extra gently numb a painful sore throat. You know you make me roll now there's an extra reason to shout. Summerfield has Christmas all wrapped up, with price check offers like save £1.48 a pound on top side of beef. With a price like that, it must be Christmas. Surviving contestants in the 15 to 1 grand final are Brian Rodman, a chartered accountant from Ashburton in Devon, Jeff Young, a retired accountant from Bury in Lancashire, and Paul Hillman, a student nurse from Hampstead in London. Thank you. Welcome back. Brian, Jeff, and Paul, the final of the grand final. 40 questions, all on the buzzer, no question or nominate, but a reminder that if you do buzz in, you have to give me the answer on the card if you buzz in before I finished asking the question. So listen carefully and make sure before you buzz in that there's nothing on that card that had I read it out would have forced you to give me a different answer. If you're happy with that, here we go. Two names, please. The Lord of the Flies and the Lord of the Rings, both published in the 1950s. The names, please, of the two authors. Paul? William Golding and J.R.R. Tolkien. On we go, please. Sport. In what context does a woman called Eileen Drury find her name on the sports pages of the National Press? Paul? Football. She's uh, the, the um, advisor to, the sort of spirit, psychic advisor to Glenn Holden. Yes, indeed she is. Yeah. She's the faith healer. 
Why, according to legend, are there no snakes in Ireland? Jeff? Because St. Patrick uh, eliminated them. Well, he drove them back, yes, oh, in fact, yeah. by charming them into the sea when they drowned. <laughs> Will you please look at this and tell me, who is this former editor of the Sunday Times? Paul? Andrew Neil. It is Andrew Neil. The history of sport. Think of Roger Bannister and the four-minute mile. Now, which swimming milestone was broken by Johnny Weissmuller in 1922 for men and by Dawn Fraser in 1962 for women? <laughs> swimming 100 metres in under one minute. Literature. If George Eliot could be described as a Victorian writer, how would you describe Jane Austen? Brian? Georgian. Yes. Her years were 1775 to 1817. Who painted the famous portrait of Sir Winston Churchill, which he, Churchill, hated, and which after his death, Lady Churchill had destroyed? Jeff? Graham Sutherland. In which Commonwealth country did this man win a general election in October and remain Prime Minister? Brian? New Zealand. Australia, it's John Howard. Phrases and sayings? The term for a person or thing that has no chance of success or is defunct derives from the old saying, never waste powder on a what? <coughs> Dead duck. Look at this, please, and tell me, what's this landmark in the northeast of England called? <coughs> Brian? The Angel of the North. On we go. Literature Conan Doyle. A great detective investigates the mysterious death of a man found in his garden beside the prints of a massive dog. Which novel? <coughs> Jeff? Hound of the Baskerville. An expression attributed to the English evangelist Roland Hill. Why should the devil have what? All? All the best tunes. Indeed, on we go. The royal family. The queen and which other member of her family may never fly in an aeroplane together? Jeff? Uh, the Prince of Wales. Sport and football. They used to be called linesmen. What are they now called? Paul? Assistant referees. Will you please look at this and tell me, who is this as a young lady of 24 in 1924? Brian? The Queen Mother. Tennis. The venue in Paris for the French Open is named after Roland Garros. In what field was he famous enough to have a major stadium named after him? <coughs> Aviation. Among other things, he was the first person to fly across the Mediterranean. Who in 1579 landed on the west coast of America and named it New Albion, possessing it in the name of Queen Elizabeth I? <coughs> Jeff. Uh, Francis Drake. Yes, indeed. Still Francis Drake, why did he call it New Albion? No? Because Albion was an old and poetic name for England. Computers, what acronym is used for the computer programming language, beginners, all purpose, symbolic, Paul? Basic. Will you please look at this and tell me, who is this member of the cabinet? Paul? Chris Smith. It is, Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport. Roman numerals, how is one million written in Roman numerals? Jeff? Uh, an M with a bar over it. Indeed, because a bar above a number multiplies it by a thousand. Entertainment, Christian name and surname, please. Who has been the main star of the entertainments Riverdance and Lord of the Dance? Paul? Michael Flatley. Music. The English title of which Mozart work shares its name with a Stephen Sondheim musical? Jeff? A little night music. Yes, Ina Klein and Act Music. Still music, The Proms. The name, please, of the American singer, the first American, to sing Rule Britannia at the last night of the proms in September of this year. Uh. Thomas Hampson. Politics. For the first time in history, the leader of the House of Commons and the leader of the House of Lords are both women. Their names, please. Uh. Brian? Margaret Beckett in the Commons, Baroness Jay in the Lords. Indeed, on we go. With which Italian city were the medieval family, the Medicis, chiefly associated? Uh. Brian? Florence. The Olympic Games, athletics. On only one occasion in the history of the Games has the gold medal for men and women in the same event been won by Great Britain. The year was 1964. What was the event? <coughs> the long jump. Lynn Davis and Mary Rand. Will you please look at this and tell me, who is this American-born poet? <coughs> T.S. Eliot. Foreign expressions, which French term, which translates as household of three, is used for an arrangement... Paul? Ménage à toi. Indeed, that's it. Classic cinema, who danced and sang outside the Mount Hollywood Art School in inclement weather, watched only by a policeman... Brian? Gene Kelly. Yes, in Singing in the Rain. On we go, please. And who played the female lead opposite Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain? Brian? Debbie Reynolds. 
In the game of chess, the white king may not move on to any square adjacent to which two black pieces? Brian? The king and the queen. Yes, indeed. Words. What in connection with speech is a lapsus linguae? Jeff? A slip of the tongue. Who in the 16th century was the last English monarch excommunicated by a pope? Paul? Henry VIII. Elizabeth I. History of the United States. Why is Peterson House in Washington, D.C. a famous address in the United States? The year, 1865. Uh, it's the house in which Abraham Lincoln actually died after being taken from the theatre. Who was on the English throne when Columbus arrived in the New World? Brian? Henry the Seventh. On we go. Name connections. The city of Tbilisi and the American city of Atlanta. What place name is the connection between those two? Paul? Georgia. Yes, they are. Both capitals. Tbilisi, the country. Atlanta, the state in America. Literature. Which relative of a young lady called Sonia is the eponymous character in a Chekhov play? Paul? Uncle Vanya. The Bible, the book of Proverbs. How many pillars has Wisdom's house? Jeff? Seven. I need a name and a regnal number, please. Which French king was executed in 1793 during the French Revolution? Jeff? Louis XVI. Well, it, uh, it couldn't have been much closer. 91, 102, Paul 111. I make that 11, 21. I make that 30 of the 40 questions answered correctly. Well done, Brian. Well done, Jeff. Paul, your winning score of 111 is enough to win something for you, and I think Laura has something for you now. Come down here. Well done. Well done. It's ever so close, isn't it? Yeah, really good. Really good. Excellent. Yeah, you should take home plenty of mantelpiece, whatever. <laughs> Well, it was a terrific game. Well done, Brian. Well done, Jeff. Well done, Paul. Certainly well done. Good game, as they say. Jeff and you, Paul. Good game. Well done, Paul. That's it for now. We'll be back with a new series starting on the 11th of January. But for the rest of this week and part of next week, there's a second chance to see some exciting editions of 15 to 1 from past series. Then after Christmas, we have a week of some of our best grand finals, followed by a week of more high-scoring games. I hope that will help you avoid withdrawal symptoms. Have a happy Christmas, a happy new year. Bye-bye. And tomorrow's programme is back at the usual time, 4 o'clock. While the Christmas competitive spirit continues on 4, Richard and Carol are up next with Countdown. Two men stand accused of Britain's biggest mass murder. It took place over Lockerbie. The men are Libyan, but Dispatches presents new evidence that challenges the case against them. Dispatches, Thursday at 9.30 on 4. Amarula cream, the spirit of Africa's marula fruit, blended with fresh cream to create a truly unique liqueur. Amarula cream. Hello. Hi. Hi. Look, I'm sorry, but I was passing and your door was ajar. I'm afraid you've been burgled. Joking. They've completely ransacked the place. Oh, my goodness. You're right. Oh, how awful. Well, it doesn't look like they've taken too much. Oh, good. No, they must have got disturbed and just run off. Yeah. I better get on and uh, sort it out. <laughs> Hi, uh, I think it's about time I got a cleaner. Could you manage about um, three hours a week? Great, hang on a sec. You do not want to see what they have done in your bathroom.
here's your chance to phone vote for your favorite Frasier. Is it death and the dog? Do you honestly believe he can understand a word you're saying? Eddie. Yada, 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 Eddie. An affair to forget. Oh, oh my God, he's going to kill me. Ham radio. I've done that accent both on Broadway and the London stage. Yes, well, perhaps they have different standards than I have. Dinner at eight. You get to pick the cut you want off the beef trolley. How much extra would I have to pay to get one from the refrigerator? Or is it moon dance? Oh, Mama, I've got it all. The winning episode will be screened during My Favorite Frasier on New Year's Day. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. What side are you? Me. No, the guy sitting behind you. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, but are you withholding? Let's get back to you. Do you know Rupert Everett? As an actor! As an actor, yeah. Did you used to be a boxer? But it's your birthday. Don't do that. I hate you on that side. Ah! That made me laugh. Do you think... It's an interview and it's serious. Sorry. Sorry. I met my dog.